I'd like to welcome everyone to the groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of phase three of Downstate's Biotechnology Incubator. We began our biotech initiative in 2000, and through the hard work of many people, the wonderful support of our political leaders in the borough, in the city council, in the state legislature, and in the federal government, as well as with the help of many, many other talented and capable individuals, many of whom are here, together we will have built this state-of-the-art 50,000 square foot biotechnology incubator for early stage companies. The incubator is full of wonderful tenants and we take great pride in their new innovative accomplishments. We would like to begin our program with SUNY Downstate's president, Dr. John Williams. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is John Williams, and I am the president of SUNY Downstate. And I wanted to acknowledge uh, the person who actually began this all, Dr. John LaRosa. And I'd like to thank all of you for uh, coming to this milestone event. The groundbreaking for the third and final phase of the Downstate Advanced Biotechnology Incubator. Biotechnology is expected to be a major source of economic growth in the 21st century. New York, with its outstanding academic medical centers, has not yet reached its full potential to be the country's center of biotech research development. This is due, in part, to a lack of affordable commercial space uh, in New York City. To address this critical shortage, downstate, working with the government at the federal, state, city, and borough levels, has developed a biotech incubator for early stage companies. Some of you will recall when the first phase of the incubator opened in 2004, the space rapidly filled. And in 2006, we opened the second phase and that too is now completely occupied. We are now building the third and final phase, which will double the size of the incubator to 50,000 square feet. It will provide 19 new state-of-the-art life science laboratories, as well as a teleconference space and other amenities for tenant companies. It will be a green building and will be LEED certified. Companies at the incubator enjoy the benefits of being associated with an academic medical center. They can use Downstate's medical and scientific library, the vivarium, and specialized research equipment. They can work with our faculty and students in pursuing scientific innovations, and they can work with our physicians to conduct clinical trials. When companies outgrow the incubator, they can move to Biobat, where they can expand and begin manufacturing activities. Biobat is a joint venture with the New York City Economic Development Corporation and the SUNY Research Foundation. Located on the Brooklyn waterfront at the Brooklyn Army Terminal, Biobat provides space to companies that outgrow the incubator and also to mature national and international companies looking for new space. Like the incubator, Biobat is being developed in three phases. The first phase, which has 38,000 square feet, has, has opened in 2008. The International AIDS Vaccine Initiative while still maintaining 1,000 square feet in this incubator, became the first example of a company that grew too large for the incubator and now is at Biobat. With CUNY's Hunter College, Downstate developed a bioscience, biotechnology, technician training program for undergraduate students. Open to science students from all colleges, the program to date has trained more than 300 students and placed 140 in jobs. In addition, downstate graduate students have the option of pursuing their PhD or MD PhD in association with the biotech companies at the incubator or Biobat. The biotech initiative contributes significantly to New York by diversifying its industrial base. It, also, it is also an economic engine for jobs, new technologies, and helps bring medical treatments to the marketplace. And now, I would like to turn the program back over to Dr. Eva Kramer, Downstate's Vice President for Scientific Affairs and Biotechnology. And she has been the driving force behind all of this. Um, 
Our next speaker is New York City Council member Matthew Eugene, who represents our district in the City Council. Councilman Eugene and other members of the City Council have provided tremendous support for our biotech initiative. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm so delighted and so honored to be here this, uh, today. I just want to take the opportunity to thank and to congratulate all the partners, all of us who have been working hard to make this happen. The President of La Rosa, President William, and now we are going to work together, we are partners. <laughs> and all of you here from the city, state, and federal government, from the, all the institutions who put the effort together to realize this wonderful, wonderful biotech incubator. As somebody who has a medical background, I know the importance of research. We have wonderful doctors, wonderful clinicians, but there is no much they can do without research. This biotechnology incubator will give to our doctors, to our students, the tool and the skill that they need to understand the disease that we cannot treat today. We have good clinicians, dedicated people, but we all know that there are certain diseases we don't even understand the mechanism. We are just trying to understand them. But with, with biotechnology and incubator like this one, we have hope that one day we'll be able to treat the disease that we don't even understand today. One day we'll be able to, to make people live longer. And I'm so proud to be part of that. My contribution is so small. But because of the value of this incubator, I feel that I'm so big. And let me say that to conclude. Not only there is a medical benefit, but it is good for the economy. It is good for the future of this country. And I'm so proud to have the privilege to serve this district where this biotech is located. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Our next speaker is State Assemblywoman Inez Barron. We'd like to thank her for all of her support. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure and a privilege and an honor to be here at this occasion. I want to thank all of those who have done the hard work to get us to this point. And I heard reference to uh, the institution reaching out to Hunter College. And my background as a teacher and as an educator and as a principal says to me that we need to look to see how we can take it down another level to the secondary level, even down to the elementary school level, so that we can pique our children's interest to let them know of the potential of what it is and the impact that it can have going forward. So I look forward to working in that regard. I've already expressed my uh, interest in doing that. In any way that I can work to be supportive of that, I certainly would look to do that. And I'm excited about the possibilities of all that this means going forward. Thank you so much. Now, uh, Borough President Marty Markowitz, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, but unfortunately, he had to be with the president. We told him he should bring the president here, but, and maybe he will, that would be terrific. Um, but in his place, uh, Kai Feeder, who is the capital budget specialist from the borough president's office, is here to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Kramer. Um, I did just get off the phone with Marty, and he is very sad he couldn't be here today. He uh, um, had a surprise meeting on uh, Staten Island with uh, the President of the United States, um, who took a little while to show up. Um, but he, you know, not allowed to complain about that, right? <laughs> um, you know, our borough's been hit hard by the devastating hurricane that was Sandy. Um, a lot of folks have lost their homes, lost their businesses, and there's a lot of rebuilding in front of us. And I think that you know that's part of what today is about. Brooklyn continuing to rebuild and you know move forward is what this is really about. And move forward we will. Um, this project will create jobs. It will create new economic act, uh, activity. Um, it will solve the world's problems, or at least some of them along the way. Um, 
of course, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for SUNY Downstate and its new visionary leader, uh, Dr. John Williams, uh, as well as President Emeritus, um, uh, Dr. John uh, LaRosa, along with uh, the generous support of city council, um, state partners, um, st uh, the EDC, as well as uh, the U.S. Economic Development Administration. And, um, you know, for all the electeds uh, in the room, Assemblywoman Joan Millman, Councilman uh, Matthew Eugene, uh, Councilman Jim Monty Williams, and uh, Assemblywoman Inez Barron, um, you know, thank you for the support and continued support along the way. Um, I'll leave it at that. There are many more important people to speak tonight, but, uh, you know, SUNY Downstate, its leadership, and uh, this project is a uh, collective result um, of all the great work that many people have put in. So give everyone a round of applause here. Thank you. Our next speaker is City Council Member Jumani Williams. Uh, thank you, obviously, uh, all the partners, uh, Dr. LaRosa, uh, Dr. Williams and everyone else who made this possible. I'm glad that Marty is visiting the president. Just want to make sure we clear that he wasn't going to come. He was asked not to come a little earlier. So, uh, but we're glad that he's here now. Um, obviously, this is a, a great beacon for our community. I know we're trying to fight through some other things. I know we'll do that together as well. And I'm glad this is here in uh, my colleague's district. Um, I represent a little south, uh, but my uh, constituents use it as well. Uh, so I'm very happy for them. This is a great day. Thank you so much. So now I would like to ask Steve Taylor, who is a principal with the New York State Senate Finance Committee and is here representing Senator uh, Scalitos and Senator Marty Golden, um, all of whom have been wonderful supporters of this project. Thank you. Thank you, and this really is an amazing day. Uh, unfortunately, my two senators are caught up doing storm-related work also. Um, I. I just want to bring us back about 10 years ago when Dr. Kramer came up to Albany, I believe, for the first time. We had a meeting on the second floor with the governor's staff, and she presented a proposal for biotechnology in Brooklyn. And the eyebrows raised, and they said, biotechnology where and how? And 10 years later, we had one of the most dynamic clusters growing in the entire country. So round of applause for her and Dr. Rose and everybody else. really has been quite amazing and you know but with everything else you know we must always keep pushing um, we need a program out of Albany to deal with supporting incubators on their in terms of a network and also their ability to foster real good business practices of the companies that are in there and we also need to re-up and and expand our emerging technology program which right now is kind of in advance so there's always work to be done but thank you for everybody here and I thank you for all your help Okay, so before continuing, I would just like to acknowledge certain people. Um, first of all, we'd like to acknowledge Congresswoman Yvette Clark, who could not join us today, but who has continuously supported our biotech initiative. Um, we have, and I may pronounce this incorrectly, Tanyuha Mohapatra, representing uh, Assemblyman Nick Perry. Could he please stand? Uh, please stand. And uh, Vincent Haynes representing Kareem uh, Kamara. Could please? Okay. Um, we also um, have another a number of other people in the audience that we would like to acknowledge. Um, so uh, Christopher Lang Smith um, <laughs> from the New York City EDC and Richard David from the, uh, is our project manager from the New York City EDC. Um, Carlo Sasura, who is president, and Andrew Steiniger, who is vice president for economic development from the Brooklyn Chamber are here. Um, let me see, I have a long list here. Okay. So uh, right now, and we'll introduce more people later, uh, we'll continue with uh, Maria Gosh, um, who is President and CEO of the New York City Investment Fund, who has been a leader in the development of biotechnology in New York City. 
Uh, thank you very much. And uh, Obama's here in spirit. His name was on the side of the way in. So I think we can consider the fact that he's uh, sending us his best. Uh, so first, let me congratulate uh, Dr. Williams, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. LaRosa, both presidents, and uh, Dr. Kramer for really your vision and the hard work that you've done to get us to this exciting day. And also, I really want to praise uh, and thank the uh, elected officials who had the vision, particularly the Brooklyn delegation, to put both resources and your imprimatur on understanding the importance of life sciences, biotech, and what it could do for uh, this community. So congratulations to you. Um, life sciences uh, is an important sector and providing affordable space for them has been one of the key impediments to building a sector in the city. So this is a very important project and it offers opportunities for our scientists and researchers, many of whom uh, are from New York City and many of whom are immigrants who come to the city, bring their smart ideas and create uh, good companies. To date, they've been creating many of those companies elsewhere, California and Massachusetts. And what this facility will do will allow us to have those people create those companies, create the new drugs, create the new devices for, to improve human health, and to create jobs in our backyard in, uh, in New York City and in Brooklyn. Uh, and I'm sort of coming here with, a, with an offer. We have an uh, a initiative with the City Council called NYC Tech Connect, which is about helping early stage scientists form companies and providing them the access to the ecosystem to lawyers, accountants, et cetera, who are the people that they need to help them grow their companies. So we are standing at the ready to work with all of the companies that uh, come into the uh, life science uh, building here. Hopefully we can send you a few tenants and uh, look forward to making this project a great success. So congratulations and thank you. I have a deep apology, <laughs> and um, a State Assemblyman Joan Millman is here. Would you like to come and say a few words? When it's such an auspicious occasion and you have so many guests, it's very likely that there's going to be somebody sitting in the front row that you greeted and then neglected to write down. I'm here because um, it is such a wonderful occasion. Um, years and years ago, uh, I had a conversation with Dr. La Rosa, who told me about, I think it was New York Poly at the time, and some doctors here who had a problem. I can't tell you what it was, because I didn't understand it at the time that he told me about it. But when they talked to the people, the engineers at Poly, they somehow were able to get together, and they were able to make an instrument that solved the medical problem that they had at the time. And so what I envision here is for things like that to happen. We have, as, as was so eloquently stated by my colleague in the city council before, we have diseases that we may not even know about yet. But there is a solution out there, and I hope that the solution is going to be right here. So I congratulate each and every one of you. I look forward to hearing about each and every one of your successes as we continue to work together, both both the city and the state and the federal government to do our very best so we provide a better and brighter future for everybody, not only in our borough, but throughout the country. Thank you. I would like to ask Dr. LaRosa to come up and say a few words. Uh, I really didn't expect to be asked to say anything, but, but it's easy for me to say uh, what I think has been said already, and that is this is all about Eva Kramer. Uh, her persistence, her vision, uh, and her ability to make things happen. There is no debt on this building, and there will be no debt on the new building. And that's because of what all of the elected officials have done, but it's because Eva just has a tenacity that does not allow her to walk away without a commitment. Uh, so uh, I think I'll take the credit only for one thing, and that is that recognizing Eva was betting on a winning horse. She's done an absolutely magnificent job. She did this at a time when everyone said, someone's mentioned it already, what, Central Brooklyn? A biotech facility? And here it is. 
and it's here because Eva just never gives up. Make sure you're on her side when you're in a fight. Thank you all very much. Uh, now I'd like to invite Dr. Timothy Colleen, who is, has a dual role as president of the State University of New York Research Foundation and is also the vice chancellor for research at SUNY. Um, and he is at, at the center of SUNY's uh, strategy for the growth of basic translation, translational and clinical research as well as innovation. Well, it's a great uh, honor to be here uh, to help physically move phase three into uh, forward. And I want, also want to congratulate Brooklyn. Uh, way to go to show the pace, and Downstate uh, in particular, and, and Eva, of course, for her leadership. And uh, if you've not visited uh, phase one, check out the interior decoration, uh, because that's all her as well. Uh, today's groundbreaking is another chapter in the story of how SUNY uh, as a system wants to drive economic development and entrepreneurial opportunity in New York State. Uh, incubators are a proven path towards business growth and job creation and they serve a key role in our economic future by providing guidance and business support as well as access to space, scientists and research equipment, all of which is needed to advance innovation and create new products. Uh, at SUNY, uh, our, we view our incubators as a prime component of our bank of assets the people, infrastructure, and technology spanning the state, unmatched in scope, scale, and diversity. And watch that space. We have 17 incubators uh, across the state today, providing more than 2,200 jobs, 200 of them right here, uh, working well right here. And as this phase three gets launched, building on success, success breeds success, Today's groundbreaking is going to show uh, uh, that more jobs are on the way. So lastly, I'd like to th uh, congratulate everybody involved for the vision here. Um, the thought that went into this, uh, the energy, the commitment, the careful planning, the phase transition from incubator to larger and larger, uh, greater uh, uh, accomplishments is very noteworthy. And I think this is a real model for others to follow in this state. And we're, we're watching carefully to, to learn those lessons. Thank you. I would now like to invite Joan Bartolomeo, president of the Brooklyn Economic Development Corporation. Uh, Joan has been a supporter of this project from day one, and we couldn't have done it without her. When Dr. Kramer said it has been almost 10 years, I couldn't believe it, because it seems like a blink of an eye. And so much has changed in the world, and so much has changed in Brooklyn in that time, but one thing that has not changed is the continual, persistent effort to make this project happen. It's never been about a building, and in New York City where real estate rules, this has never been about real estate. This has been about a vision for an industry, a growth, and for jobs for people in Brooklyn. And it's sort of restored my faith in making things happen. It is so hard to make things happen in New York City, but this project has. And it's been, the word privilege has been used a lot today but it has been an honor and a privilege to work with Dr. Kramer and Dr. La Rosa and all of the talented people who are working every day on both projects to make this happen. It's really the culmination of Dr. Kramer's dream and determination and long after she's gone, it will be her legacy and SUNY's legacy as well. I've been so honored to be part of it, so thank you. I would just like to acknowledge some other people who are here. Astra Bain Dowell, who is our Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. <laughs> Dr. Ian Taylor, who is our Senior Vice President of Biomedical Research and Education and Dean of the College of Medicine. <laughs> Alan Deja, who is our Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Um, our architects from NK Croxon Collaborative, Paul Drago and Anatole Plotkin. <laughs> and from H.M. Hughes, our general contractor, we have President Vincent Messina. <laughs> okay, so our final speaker of the day uh, is Anderson Miku. He's the Chief Operating Officer of Biosignal Group and he's one of our incubator success stories. Good afternoon. 
it is, um, I know this word has been used a lot, but it is a, a privilege, but also an obligation for me to speak here today. Um, a privilege because it gives me the uh, chance to convey to you our perspective, if you will, from the trenches of the impact that the incubator and its outstanding management team has had and continues to have on a daily basis on our company during what is perhaps one of its most difficult transition periods from startup to first commercialization. And it's an obligation because aware of the difference that being here has made for us, um, I feel compelled to do whatever I can to uh, uh, pass it forward, if you will, and ensure that other talented teams uh, that are now in the position we were a few years ago um, can also use this invaluable resource to make their contribution and reach their potential. My name is Anderson Miku. I am the COO of BioSignal Group. Our company was founded just about 10 years ago uh, on the understanding of the value of electroencephalogram recordings, EEGs, as a diagnostic tool for millions of people every year. And also on the realization that due to technological limitations, uh, this tool is largely unavailable today in areas of applications that could use it most, such as emergency departments in hospitals, for example. So our mission is as simple as it is challenging. First, develop new EEG recording technology that breaks down these barriers to entry technology that is smaller, wireless, portable, rapidly deployable, and cost-effective. And then leverage that technology to change the current standard of care and make EEG-based diagnosis as commonplace as sonograms have become over the last 20 years. So no big deal, right? It's a, it's a lofty goal, um, of course, for any company, uh, but I think especially for one the size of a soccer team. And uh, in spite of our expertise, talent, effort, and dedication, I think the challenges we faced would have been far too great without the support infrastructure that the incub incubator has provided for us over the years. Um, because make no mistake, this is far more than just a great place to work. Um, Eva Kramer, Sam Keel, and David Norton work tirelessly every day to transform this into a truly supportive environment. Um, drawing from the original confluence of, of business, academic, and medical communities that have made this place possible in the first place, we had the opportunity to access an outstanding array of academic and technical resources and facilities that I think other, would have been impossible for us to reach otherwise. So in return, we were able to do what we know how to do best. Ten years later, that miniaturized, portable, rapidly deployable, and cost-effective EEG recording technology has not only become a reality at BSG, but as of June, um, we have also received FDA clearance for uh, commercialization. In addition, <laughs> thank you. In addition, our technology has successfully been used in a year-long $3 million NIH-sponsored grant uh, clinical trial that actually took place right here in the emergency departments of both SUNY Downstate and Kings County hospitals. And the data that we obtain from it is truly groundbreaking and I think not only validates our technology but completely vindicates our belief in the value of this diagnostic tool as well as in our effort and sacrifice over the years to make it, uh, make it happen. So as a, the, one of the oldest tenants here at the incubator, I sincerely hope that our accomplishments up to this point provide the most compelling testament to the value and importance of this institution, as well as its role in promoting and sustaining the kind of development, progress, and growth that are often possible only in the passionate and energetic environment of a startup such as ours. There's much more, left, much more work left for us to do and many challenges to overcome, but we are confident that together we can bring this project to a successful conclusion as we see the incubator not only capable to provide, to continue to provide its invaluable support, but seeing it growing and thriving alongside with us. Thank you very much. So now I would like to ask the speakers and all the elected officials to please join Dr. Williams um, for the official groundbreaking. You have to get your hard hats <laughs> and shovels and come over to, to do this. There he is. <laughs> 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 